It's a long bike race. Have you have you ever does anybody know anybody? We'll let you guys read it. It is a long bike race. Look at how long the run is, too. <laughs> yeah. Right. How long's the run, everybody? Um, keep reading. Time. Keep reading it through. Read it a couple times. So go and actually, you know, maybe read it like three times and, and you know, kind of jot down some takeaways about what we're about to embark on. Make sure you have your notebooks and your calculators ready to go also, because we're going to have to do some number crunching. Okay, if you've read the problem through a couple of times, can you guys put a thumbs up, like do like one of your reactions to give me a thumbs up if you've done so? I'm just looking and waiting for thumbs up from several of you. Only a couple of you have given me a thumbs up that you read the problem. Awesome. Great. All right. Okay. All right. Um, for those of you who have your um, videos off, just make sure that if I need to talk to you or see you that you're ready to go. Here comes Cole. Did anybody reach out to Jace? Did anybody reach out to Maggie? Morning. Okay, so with that said, so let's go into that problem. So for uh, those of you who just arrived, um, I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna do a share screen and let's see. Um, let's just do this, why not? For now, let's just work on, no, let's work on, let me just not share, hold on a second here. I wanna go to my workspace, here we go. And go back and go back to this and find out where you guys are. And we'll go to sharing my screen. By the way, do you all know that you can annotate? Hmm? Annotate, do you guys know you can write on this? So if you don't, what I want you to do is go to the top of your screen for those of you who haven't annotated ever before, and you'll see that there is an option um, where you'll see it says options and it says annotate, and you can annotate. So what I would like you to do is, you know, did I guys, did I have you um, put your initials on the screen? Did I have you guys write your initials on the screen the other day? No? Good. So everybody should be annotating at this time. So I'd like you to go ahead and just put your initials on the screen real quick, just so we can get an idea on um, what it is that we're doing. So um, if you're not sure what to do, you need to ask because again, this is going to be very interactive. So if I call on you, I am expecting you to be able to, you know, put an answer in on something. Okay. So keep it going. So again, if you're not sure, ask. See, sure. How do you do it? So who is able to do it and can share with their colleague um, or colleagues who have questions on what they need to do? Can somebody walk somebody through that? All right, Maggie, go to speaker viewer or view speaker screen and go up to view options. And then it says annotate on like the eighth one down. Make that very straight. Do you have that option on? No. Did you Are you on gallery view? No, I'm on speaker view. Do you see like the yellow or green like tab and like on the top? Yeah, wait, okay. Okay, got it. Got it? Okay, so can you give me your initials there? There's uh one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty-one. Okay. 
So go here. Anybody else who wants to come in? I can just close that. Okay. So everybody's okay with the annotation. So can you do me a favor and delete all of your stuff? And then we can actually begin this problem and start working through it as a class. So just delete that out, which is nice. But the great thing is, is I can ask you um, to interject and uh, draw things on there, which would be really quite awesome. Okay. So have you ever met anybody who's done a, um, Jillian, could you erase your thing there, hon? Um, have any of you ever done something where you know somebody who's done an Ironman triathlon? Um, my uncle has done a half, half Ironman. Not a full one, but a half. It's unbelievable. Think about it. A 2.4 mile swim. That is going around the track in a pool. How many times? Anybody? Eight. Eight. Try 10. Because that 0.4 is like a half a mile. So, because two miles would be eight laps, plus another two would give you 10. So, that would be about 2.4 miles. Plus, you have to do a 112-mile um, bike race and then a 26.2-mile marathon. Can you imagine? So, That's I don't light know. work. What did you say? That's light work. <laughs> you're adorable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're adorable. So, and by the way, to answer your questions about, uh, you know, I think some of you said, I don't know if any of you from this class were asking me about, um, uh, when I'm going to do workouts and stuff when it gets warm out like to me I want to work out outside and it's freezing out like what is going on with this weather? I feel like we've like regressed to winter. Would you all agree with that? Can I get a thumbs up? Okay um, So taking a look over here um, When we want to write this we can see that there's clearly three different events you got the swim you got the the, um, the bike race and you have the uh, the run so when you're looking at that um, Jillian, can you erase that, honey, so I have space to write? Um, so for me, it's, is it, yeah, is it not yours? Is it somebody else's? No, you're the only, um, no, like, So go up to the top where it says options, and you'll see that it says clear on it. Okay, so, and if they're running these um, at steady rates, um, you know, you're swimming at a steady rate of, two miles per hour, you're cycling at a steady rate of 20 miles per hour, and you're running at a steady rate of nine miles per hour. What are we talking about when we're talking about these rates? Um, the slope. The slope, exactly. So these are actually going to represent that these numbers here are going to represent the slopes of our line. So these are all slopes. Very good. So we know that those are going to be our slopes. So the thing is, is the first thing that we do is we swim, right? So imagine we're doing this, that we've actually trained for this. Wow, look at us go. That we've actually trained for this. And um, let me see, I just want to move this over just a little bit. Okay, I have some space to write. Um, so we have to figure out what the equations of our lines are. But the great thing is that Rebecca noted that these represent, these here are all of the slopes of our lines because we're assuming we're running and biking and swimming at a steady rate. So to begin with, so we already know it's going to be a piecewise function, but now what are some things you think we need to find out as we go along and do this, mm -hmm. uh, do this problem? What are some things that we need to consider? Um, the restrictions. Okay, so we need to figure out what some of the restrictions are exactly. So we need to figure out what some of the restrictions are. What does that mean in the context of this problem? So if you're doing this race, what do you think you want to know? What do you think you want to find out as far as each event goes? Where you're starting, where you're finishing. Where you're finishing and where you're starting each one. Good. So your start and finish. Right. For each one. That's what you want to know. So that means that we have to figure out those times, right? So when we start and when we finish, so we're going to have to figure out what those times are. So when we're looking at a problem like this, we want to find out how long does it take us to swim 2.4 miles if we're doing it at two miles per hour? How long does it take us to do, you know, on a 112 mile bike race if we're biking at 20 miles per hour? And then, you know, if we're running at nine miles an hour, whoever this person is, is a, is a savage, by the way, you know, because I, I have no idea. This is unbelievable. This, uh, whoever this athlete is, um, whoever he or she is, it's pretty amazing. But um, anyway, so when I'm looking at something like this, I'm saying to myself, self, the first thing that I know is that the first event is that I'm running at a rate of two miles per hour. Yes? Yeah? If I ask you guys how long is it going to take to swim 2.4 miles, what would you tell me? 
how would you figure out how long it's going to take you to swim 2.4 miles? It's going to take a little more than an hour. It's going to take, and how would you find out exactly how long it would take? Anybody? You, go ahead. Well, you know that it's like you run two miles per hour and it's just like a 2.4 mile swim. So it's at least going to be one hour. And since like for the decimal, you could divide 60 by 10 mm -hmm. and then just add two. Which okay, and that's certainly one better. way you can go about it. But a, a faster way to do it is that we know the distance is equal to. Oh, rate over time. <laughs> that's time. Yes. How many of you know distance easier. is equal to rate times time? Right? And you all do know that. If I'm driving 80 miles an hour, how far have I gone in two hours, everybody? Oh. 160 miles. 160, because it, we're doing, you know, 80 miles per hour, and in two hours, I have gone a distance of 160 miles. Can I get a thumbs up for those of you who are like, yeah, I got that. Awesome. Okay. So when we look at this, so if we want to find out how long it takes us to do this, we know that we have to go 2.4 miles. So we're doing 2.4 miles is equal to my rate, which is two miles per hour times my time. Because if you go back, Michael said, we got to figure out when we start and finish each part of the race. So can you guys tell me what the time is or how long it takes? How long does it take for, um, how long does it take for whoever this person is, this fabulous person is to, um, swim that 2.4 miles. Can you guys give me an answer for that? One point two hours. One point two hours. Good. So it's going to take one point two hours. Awesome. So I know it's going to take one point two hours for us to do that. So for me, I think one of the first things I want to do is I want to sketch what this function is doing, and I think after that, then we can start to build what the function is, and then we could go and answer the domain and range and so forth. So if I were to just start by graphing, you know, just this part of the race, at time t equals zero, have you done anything? Um, at time t equals zero, have you gone anywhere? No. No. So that means you're starting at the origin, okay? I'm even going to change the color. So you're starting at the origin, right? And you know that your slope of your line, the slope of this line that I'm going to be drawing in is what, everybody? Two. Two. The slope is two, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this two. Now, the cool thing is, is I know that this ordered pair right here is, it takes me how long? One point two hours. Because I'm gonna call this time, and I'm gonna call this my distance, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a distance versus time graph. So distance over time represents my rate, and that's what my slopes are. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Good. So then I know that this is 1.2 here, and then my y coordinate is? 2.4. It's 2.4, bravo. So I know that this is 1.2 comma 2.4, okay? Now, maybe we can do this simultaneously. So now, you know, let's say that, you know, you get out of the water and you immediately jump on a bike, okay? There's no time for transitioning. If we did, it would just make this problem more complex, but I wanna keep it a little simpler for our purposes. So from this point on, you are biking, yes? Yeah. What is the slope of this new line? Like we know the slope of this line is how much, folks? Two. What is the slope of this line? Two. Two. So the slope of my next line is going to be what, Chantal? The slope of my next line is going to be? Um, wait, I'm sorry. I was so copying down the stuff from before well i'm recording this so i'd rather you can watch and then you can go back in and and uh -oh. watch. want to keep this going because we're always short on time we only get 30 minutes yeah. in, in our class so i'm going back to saying that we know that the rate at which somebody is that this person is swimming is two miles per hour so we know the slope of this line is two and it makes sense by the way because if i were to find the slope between these two points right between zero zero and 1.2 and 2.4 I would do 2.4 minus zero over 1.2 minus zero and 2.4 divided by two uh, by divided by 1.2 is two. Would everybody agree with that? So mm -hmm. Chantal, I'm asking you, the biker, as you bike, what is the new slope? Um, 20. It's 20, good. So it's gonna be 20, which means it is gonna be a much steeper slope, right? Is everybody yeah. with me? 
Mm -hmm. Now, if you look over here, I'm going to ask Sanaz, what does the x coordinate represent in this problem? <clears throat> Time. Time, good. Um, Luke, what does the y coordinate represent in this problem? The y distance. Your distance. So you've already traveled 2.4 miles because we spent it swimming, right? So before mm -hmm. I do anything, can you guys tell me what my new y coordinate would be if we're talking about distance? 114.4. Where did you get? That's beautiful. So 114.4. So was that Jason who told us that? Yeah. Awesome. So you know that it's going to be, can you explain to people where you got 114.4 from? So since the y coordinate is going to be the total distance, you have to add the distance of the bike ride plus the distance of the swim. Exactly. So right here, you have your 112 mile bike race, right? So you've biked 112 miles, but you've already biked 2.4 miles. Can I have a thumbs up for those of you who understand that we took 112 and added it to 2.4 to get what that particular y coordinate is? Good. So now um, I'm going to just move on to, and then we'll. I think we. We'll, I think I want to backtrack before I find this time right over here before we do that. Um, after you bike, so we know we'll take care of time um, later on. So now this person is done biking, and now they literally throw the bike down and start running. How fast is that person running, Davis? Nine miles an hour. Or nine miles an hour, exactly. So now we know the slope of this line is going to be nine, right? So I'll make that a line where it is green. So I know that my line is going to be right over here. So now I haven't dealt with the time yet, but can somebody tell me what my Y coordinate, I'm going to say somebody. Um, Let's see. I'm going to make this wider. I'm trying to think of who I want to call on. It's so hard because you're not all literally in front of me. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, Maeve, can you tell me what my Y coordinate is going to be right here? Uh, 140.6. 140.6. .6. Now, can I ask, can I ask Shreyas how you, how, um, how Maeve knew that the Y coordinate here is going to be 140.6? Since running, since the mile marathon is 26.2 miles, mm -hmm. you just add that to the total that we had before, which right. was 104.4. Beautiful. So you're saying if I had the 114.4, which is what this person has already accomplished, they have to go another 26.2. So if you add 114.4 to 26.2, you're going to get 140.6. Yes? Awesome. So there's a couple of things here. So now I'm going to leave it to you guys that... I'm gonna ask you that now that we have these things in place, I wanna find out what the equation of the pink line is and what the equation of the green line is. So, and if you look at the uh, pink line, we know the slope of that line is how much? 20. How much is the slope of that line, Grace? 20. It's gonna be 20, beautiful, good. Now, in order, us, in, in order for us to um, figure out what it is that we need to figure out, we need to find the equation of that line. Would you all agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So we need to find the equation of that line. What point, um, what point, uh, Jace, would you use to find the equation of that pink line? Um. What point sits on that line that I know the ordered pair for? 1.2 comma. Beautiful. 1 .2. Yes, yes, yes. So now we're all going to do y equals mx plus b, right? We're going to go off to the side and we're going to do y equals mx plus b. And we're going to use this point right here because if you extend the line, by the way, you can tell that your y-intercept is going to be what kind of a number if I move along here? A negative number. It's going to be a negative number. So when you do this, you should wind up with a negative number for that. So the first thing I want everybody to do is find the equation of um, the uh, biking line. And when you have it... Give me a thumbs up when you are ready to move and shake. Dun, 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 dun. 
And somebody is somebody ready to show us how to do it? Lily, are you ready? Can you show us how to find the equation? Can you annotate over in this little area? Or actually, just, I don't care what space you do it in. Just go find a space and annotate and show us how to do that. And then for those of you who are done and you think you have the right equation, how would you figure out the time that he actually finishes biking? That's what you want to know. How much do you actually figure out the time that he actually finishes biking? Is it awkward drawing? Yes. It is, right? <laughs> So what I'll let you do is finish this part and then I'll help you take over the rest, okay? <laughs> I guess with the annotation part, it is hard because you're using your mouse pad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we had like touch screens? Okay, so right over here, I will, I will help. And so you have 2.4 is equal to, what's 20 times 1.2? 24. 24. It's 24, right? And so this is 24 plus B. And then how do I solve for B, everybody? I'll subtract 24. We're gonna subtract 24 from both sides. And what did everybody get for B? Yell it out nice and loud, loud and proud. Negative 21.6. Good. So this is negative 21.6. So we know the equation of this line is y is equal to 20x minus 21.6. Now, my question is, is how do you use that to find the x coordinate here? And this is the time that he actually does what? This is the time that he what? The total time that's passed. You're right. The total time that's passed, right? And then, yeah. So from the time he has been swimming to the time he's been biking, right? Mm -hmm. How would you find out what this um, X coordinate is over here? Um, let me call somebody out, Lucas. How do you find it? Yeah, how do you find the X coordinate or that time that he finally finishes doing his uh, biking? Well, you take the equation that Lily found and then you plug in the Y and then solve for X. Beautiful, so you're saying you would do 114 then? 114.4 is equal to 20x minus 21.6. Yeah. Awesome. So then you would do 114.4, right? Add 21.6 to that and then divide that by two. What did any, hold on a second. 20. What do you get? Divide 20? by 20. Yeah, I think I divide it by, so it's 136 divided by 20. And I believe you get? Uh, 8.3. 8.3? Oh, wait. 144 plus 21.6. 144.4. Don't forget there's a point four. Yeah. Oh, wait. I, wait, 144 or, or 114? I'm sorry, 114. Sorry, it's oh, I did 144. Okay. Yeah, I, isn't it funny? Like those numbers yeah. get lost off. I know I do it all the time. Um, okay, what did you get? Uh, 6.8. So did I. So I got 6.8. Okay. But if I were to ask you, um, if I were to ask you, who haven't I talked to yet? Lindsay, how long did it actually take him to bike? How long did it actually take him to bike? 7.6, I mean, not 7, uh, 5.6. Can you tell us how you got 5.6? Because I subtracted 6.8 from 1.2. Ah, good, because it takes him 1.2 hours to um, swim. And then, you know, he's got, he's been going for 6.8 hours. Can you imagine? You're swimming and biking and it's almost seven hours now. Now, the other thing is, so she's saying if you do 6.8 minus 1.2, it'll tell you the length of time that he actually um, biked. So now my thing is, is do you think everybody, if I'm looking at the green line, are you guys all able to tell me how you would find the equation of the green line? Yeah. Yes, because you know the slope of this line is how much? Nine. The slope of this is nine. And what point would you use to find the equation of this line, uh, Spencer? What point would you use to help you find the equation of this line? 
6.8 comma you use 6.8 comma 1.114.4 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. so can you guys do me a favor and go get me the equation of that line and then from here we will build our it's awful we will build our piecewise function and we'll just kind of finish up what we're doing and then have a conversation and then move on all right If somebody has the equation, I will take the equation of that line. And I'll do it in black so you can see it. It's I'm ready. Y equals Y equals nine X plus fifty three point two. Did people get plus fifty three point two? If you yes or no, I need a thumbs up. If not, we need to go back and relook at this. Yes, you all got thumbs up, bravo. <laughs> so now you know I'm gonna ask you to find what this time is here, right? You know I am. So go get me that time. Now that you have this equation, and again, you're doing y equals mx plus b. So if you have the slope and you have a point, you can always find the equation. Can I get a thumbs up? Can I get a uh, clap? Can I get something to say, yes, why well, you're right? Awesome. Thank you for your lack of. Anyway, I just need to know what this time is. I will be calling on any one of you momentarily. So please be prepared for that. Can I get the time for this? I got 9.71. 9.71? Yeah. Yes, okay, I heard 9.71. So think about that. Somebody has been going for almost how long? How long has somebody been going for? You're almost 10 hours. Almost 10 hours, wow, like think about that. So we have the equation of this line here with, we know what the restrictions are. We have the equation of this line here. I forgot to write what the equation of this line was. What's the equation of that line? Y equals? Yes. I didn't hear you. 3X. And uh, uh, 2X. 2X, very good, because the y-intercept is zero. So we have these three equations. So these are the three equations that represent our piecewise function, right? So in our piecewise, we can do f of x is equal to 2x. The second one would be f of x is equal to 20x minus 21.6. And then 9x plus 53.2. Now, if I put my restrictions in here, what would be my restrictions for my swimming? What are my, and it would be the restrictions would represent what? Would it represent dog, cats, time, distance? What does it represent? Christina, what does it represent? If I'm going to put something over here, I'm looking to look at the restrictions on my. Well, it's the X values, right? And who are the X values in the context of this problem, kiddo? Uh, you're on, I can't hear you. Time, very good. So for 2X, Jillian, what would be the restrictions on the time for my 2x, which represents what? The 2x represents when the, we are? Like when you're, um, when you're swimming. When you're swimming. And what is the time that you would put on here? Uh, zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than 1.2. 1.2, very good. Okay, so then the second one, Michael, if I have 20x minus 21.6, what are my restrictions for this one? Um... 1.2 is less than x is less than or equal to 21.6. I mean, no, um, 6.8. Beautiful. And then finally, my last one here, uh, Danny. Daniel, can I have my last one? Um, 6.8 is less than x is less than or equal to 9.71. Very good. Awesome. So now, if I want to get my domain, what would be my domain? in this problem over here. So the domain, Grace, what would be my domain? 
Uh, sorry, one sec. I was writing stuff down. That's okay, sweetie. And then, um, and then the rules while I'm waiting for you, Rachel, I need the range when you're ready. So the domain represents what, Grace? The X values. Yeah, and X values represent what in the context of our Iron Man problem? Time. Time, good. So the time is ranging from where? From? From zero mm -hmm. to 9.71. Yes, and you can write it like this, or you can do zero less than or equal to x less than or equal to 9.71. That's beautiful. Rachel, can I have the range, and what does the range represent? Um, represents the distance. Beautiful. So your distance is going to go from? It goes from zero to 140.6. Beautiful. And again, you can write the notation like that. I would encourage you all to put this into Desmos to see how decent our stuff looks, but the other thing I want you to think about is people do this. I think um, Sammy and Olivia Chin, I don't know if you guys know who Sammy and Olivia Chin are. Do you know who they are? For those of you who do know, their father runs these, uh, does these uh, Ironman triathlons. I personally, to me, I want to do a small one. Do you know what a small triathlon is? A small triathlon, so let me just stop sharing here. So what's really fun is that a small um, triathlon is, um, a half a mile swim, a, I think it's a 30 mile bike or 25 mile bike and a 5k. I'm like that. I think I could do right. But this other, this crazy thing where whoever this elite athlete is, it takes them only 10 hours to do. I think that would take me like a week, you know? So if you think about that, like you could think about yourself, like how long would it take me to do a triathlon, like a, a, an iron man or iron woman, um, to be fair. Um, so that's the kind of stuff like that I want that I, I love that problem because you find out that there are elite athletes in the world and it actually applies to what we were doing with piecewise function. So um, again, uh, one of the things that I asked you guys to do, so hold on a second as we move forward, go to my desktop and hit share and go over here and go into, this is in my way and go here and you can see so that way I'm trying to be clear about what the uh, expectations are. Let me just move this. This is so hard to move this thing out of the way, but I've gotten better at, here we go. All right, so today you'll notice that it says that we are working on the Iron Man problem, okay? We are working on the Iron Man problem. And um, because we're working on, we worked on the Iron Man problem, one of the things that you're gonna do today is uh, part two. This is the classwork that we did, but part two is, what are some takeaways you got from the Iron Man problem? And then within the realm of, of that, we're gonna do, you guys are gonna do a museum problem where it talks about, you know, another piecewise function that relates to something like we did with the Iron Man. You're gonna create a video and notice, when is it due? When's it due? Next Tuesday. Yeah, baby. So you got some time to work on it. So the maximum amount of time you get to work on it is, or the length of the video is only allowed to be a maximum of, Eight minutes. Eight minutes, that's it. So, and again, um, most of you have been doing a phenomenal job in how you're displaying your work, how you're explaining your work, you're using Desmos, you're using you know, some really cool tools. Um, some people actually have whiteboards, so um, all that is all well and good. So today, that reflection from what we just did in classes do, and then I would start working on the museum stuff, but like I said, it's not due until next Tuesday. But I am going to give you guys work to do. Won't be a lot. Like there might be a video I might have you watch and then, you know, reflect on that and then do a problem. But most of the time it'll be for you guys to be able to spend working on the video because it is only one problem. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I want to know if you guys have any further questions.